Have you ever seen a magic card that was so cool that you actually wanted to be that card? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. Welcome to my video talking about the new card from Guilds of Ravnica. That's Murmuring Mystic. And as I asked before, have you ever wanted to be a magic card because oh lordy I want to be this dude in fact you know what hoods up okay so let's let's talk about how cool this card is now first of all I'll let you know that I actually waved the card away at first in terms of mechanics because I made an assumption before I got to the bottom of the card let's talk about what we've got here we've got one blue and three colorless for a one five human wizard and that's the part that threw me off. I read the ability on the card that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue bird illusion creature with flying. And I was like, oh, that's all right. But four mana for a 1-1 one, one feels really, whoa, 1-5, wait one minute. And that changed my opinion in terms of the actual usefulness of the card. That five toughness will keep it sticking around. Now, that's not, this isn't why I want to be the card. I'm not like, I've always wanted to be a 1-5. I've always wanted to have that big Nicki Minaj booty, but also only have the strength of a normal man. What sane man would wish for that? No, 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 no. No, clearly there's something else here that's drawing me to it. And the artwork, oh my God, the artwork, the concept behind the card, all of this, it all comes together so incredibly well for me. Oh God, do I love this. So, Let's take a look at the artwork. You have the murmuring mystic who is walking through some kind of city square or something. This to me is kind of a play on the pigeon lady. The lady <clears throat> that you would see in a park or something like that feeding all kinds of birds, right? It's that kind of concept surrounded by swarms of birds and stuff like that. But obviously this is a different concept. A bird lady is just a, like kind of in a way like almost like a homeless tragic kind of figure where this guy is clearly a well taken care of confident and um well taken care of individual there's no there's no doubt about it when you look at the finery they're wearing that so it really just feels to me like it's like really loosely inspired by the pigeon lady and again that's not <laughs> that's not the part that i want to live because i could go and live that life i can get bread i know where to get bread okay i don't mean money i just mean bread all right anyways let's get back to the murmuring mystic here you guys don't know what a mystic is a mystic is somebody who is like seeking greater knowledge and a connection to something bigger than them there's two variations of it really there's like the religious kind and the magical kind and there is kind of an interlacing of those it's got that sort of like seeking to be part of a greater power whatever that may be and it involves a lot of contemplative thought and things of that nature, right? So I enjoy that concept. The The artwork for me is a massive home run because the birds, the illusionary birds, they get me so much. I adore the way they look. I think they're absolutely beautiful. They have this crazy inner glow and you can see it reflected on the cobblestones. You can see it wherever they are. And you can see one even way, way there in the back peeking out he's just kind of sitting on the post there so you've got you've got all these birds everywhere that are summoned up by his abilities now he is kind of this lone contemplative like almost monk-esque style feel to him obviously he's still a wizard but it's got that sort of like intellectual feel to it overthinker these birds are created as a side effect of casting sorceries or instants and that makes me wonder like each time he slowly learned how to siphon off the tiniest little fraction of magic right whenever he casts a spell he's found a way to siphon off a tiny little bit of that magic's essence and use it to create one of these illusory birds that flock around him which i think is really neat do they have do these birds all have individual aspects based on where they came from like for example if he used some kind of spell to read somebody's mind would the bird that was created from that have some of the mental aspects of the person whose mind was read would it would it have something tied into that kind of magic and also for example if the birds were created by let's say a sorcery 
or an instant? Would that dictate their personalities? Would the ones that were created by sorceries be sort of slower, more languorous, flapping through the air, where the ones that were created as a side effect of instant magic were kind of zipping around more like hummingbird effects, right? I really enjoy the flavor behind that. And on top of that, I feel like the bird concept ties in really well to why he has additional toughness. Normally, humans only are one ones, right? And clearly, if you look at him, he looks like he would be a one one, right? Now, to me, what happens to give him this five toughness, and this is purely conceptually my opinion, all these birds, basically, whenever there's any kind of threat, the birds just create this kind of fluster or hurricane storm around him where they're flying around. It doesn't do any additional damage, even though they're one ones and could, if they were attacking, be pecking and things like It doesn't do any damage because they're focused purely on defense. They swirl around him in a defensive kind of vortex in a, an attempt to both make it more difficult to see him and strike him and also to just absorb the blows. Like the birds are all focused on getting in the way of anything that's going to hit the mystic. So I really love the concept of this. I like the idea of this lone mystic wandering through what to me feels like a kind of like a rainy morning. You've got that misty cityscape in the background. He's very much alone and not alone at the same time. And I enjoy that. He is alone and but he's not alone if you count these like fragments of his own magical essence that he keeps with company and it seems like the birds do have these different personalities it seems like they're engaged in different things some of them seem to be like the ones curious about him right on his head and you have some that look like they might be almost looking around for food in the background some of them look like they're emulating regular birds and some of them look like they're they have some kind of goal i i enjoy this i really really love this i do want to point out that i think it's funny since we're talking about the art i think it's funny that Wizards touted that we were going back to Ravnica in autumn. And all that really is mean to me so far is, look, the trees in the background of orange leaves. Which is, the, I made that as a joke, but that's literally all it's turned in. It's like, uh, I guess they could have put a, uh, like a handful of like a, like a cup of pumpkin spice there or something like that. But it, to me, the autumnal thing wasn't really a selling point. This artwork is absolutely gorgeous. This gigantic cobblestone plaza that he is walking through with his head down. Murmuring Mystic, the entire time he's walking along, he's probably just talking to himself, lost deep in thought as he tries to gain greater magical understanding. And clearly, he's gained a fair bit. He's figured out how to literally leech off extra magical essence and create all these birds. And the flavor text on the card, while it's not attached um, specifically to him, I enjoy it as well. Rumors float through the city like crows, alighting on citizens seemingly at random. It's, I, I like the word alighting. I like old archaic words. I enjoy the esoteric as well. So this card for me is a massive home run. I had no idea how much a huge fan I would be of these like blue illusory birds. These things specifically, they strike a, a particular nerve with me. I really, really enjoy them. I would absolutely love to be the murmuring mystic, just wandering along, lost in my own thoughts, conjuring up magic, and as a result, creating all these beautiful birds that just fly around. Like, that, that is the life for me, my friends. I absolutely love it. I am not a big sci-fi guy. I don't like science fiction, mainly because I find science fiction almost to be just a prediction of what we're going to have in the future. And magic has far more... Uh, it just reaches outside the realm of what I feel like we're going to have in the future. And it's more fuel for my imagination instead of just a uh, an Ikea menu of what's coming down the pike maybe 100 or 200 years in the future because mankind is amazing and our scientists are amazing. So, while I totally love technology, it doesn't fuel my imagination and make my heart soar the same way that cards like Murmuring Mystic do. And the other card that ties into this, because there are two cards that have this absolutely lovely blue illusory bird thing going on. Now, this one uses crows. The other one we're going to talk about is the Invocation Days, all right? The Invocation Days that they put out in, uh, I believe it was Hour of Devastation. Now, that artwork to me is absolutely mind-blowing. I couldn't believe it when I saw the artwork. This, this might be out of like modern artwork because some of the older stuff has nostalgic ties to me and I really love stuff like Pixie Queen. But this might be my absolute favorite artwork out of anything printed in like the last 10 years years. This day's artwork is incredible. Now, it uses um, ibises instead because they, they wanted those birds, obviously, for the setting there. Now, it basically depicts an initiate 
that is um, being distracted. But th that's the concept behind it. The concept behind it, days, for those of you who don't know, is a counter spell. You may return an island you control to an owner's hand rather than pay the casting cost of days, and you counter a spell unless its controller pays one. So the idea is just a momentary distraction, but what a distraction. Oh my god. The birds all flying up, like they, they would just appear up out of nowhere, right? Like, the, here's the cool thing, guys. While I went back to look for this day's artwork because I wanted to contrast and compare and see what elements really called to me about this sort of thing. I actually found an article on a website called Original Magic Art Store where they interviewed Richard Wright talking about days. So we have more information. This is great. We've got information about the creative process behind days. So I'm going to read to you in Richard's own words what went on with this card and we can we can show you step by step how we got to the end and then we'll talk about the finished package because I adore this. And by the way, if you haven't checked it out, Richard Wright has a fantastic website set up on I believe it's called ArtStation where there's a whole bunch of amazing artwork. The only nitpick I have is he has renewal spelled wrong on the one thing, which I feel like probably doesn't help if people are searching for stuff. But, I mean, that's a, a minor nitpick. He's got, he's got to change that E to an A. Let's not get bogged down in that. So, in July 2016, this is, sorry, this is Richard's words here. In July 2016, I was commissioned to illustrate a number of cards for Amonkhet. I had illustrated a couple of cards for this set already and was looking forward to doing some more. I enjoy illustrating cityscapes in general. He's quite good at it. And Amonkhet's massive pyramid-like architecture is great fun to paint. They're such simple shapes and yet really powerful at the same time. I want to stop for a moment and talk about this. This is why it's really nice to hear about things from the artist's own mouth and understand like how they think about art because I don't really know anything about art except how it makes me feel when I look at it. But I never thought of simple yet powerful shapes. But after I read that, I went back up and I looked at the pyramid in the background. I looked at the obelisks in the background of days and I looked at the structures off to the side, which I assume are more obelisks. And they are very simple shapes and they do have a very commanding, powerful presence. So I enjoyed that he was able to encapsulate that concept. I feel like I, I learned something there and I find that enjoyable. So. This is the actual brief um, that he received from Sam Burley, who was the art director at the time. So, art title, days, description, Amonkhet, uh, art description. Setting, Amonkhet, color blue, location, a calm part of the river in the city-state. Action. In this shot, we see a human male initiate on his knees in shallow water facing away from us. He's looking up in awe at a flock of ibises rising dramatically from the surface of the water. Only, these birds are illusionary made from bright blue energy. It should seem like a wall of birds stretched across the frame in front of the initiate. See the image in the reference packet for inspiration. I don't have that available. But the birds should read as birds at card size. So they wanted to make sure it was clear that they are birds. And then they give focus, and the focus is the initiate set against the wall of birds. So the contrast between the two, I guess. Uh, mood, an overwhelming sight to behold. Notes. This is a reprint, so the name is final. I suppose that's just additional notes, so they need to know this art, the name may change, so don't do something too tied to the name. That's cool to learn as well. Reading this, I knew I had to try and create something really awe-inspiring. Well, he definitely achieved that. Something that in real life would make your jaw drop. And it did, man. The, the, the capability of these artists are absolutely amazing. I did a video on Transmogrifying Wand where I talked about the artwork there. And Aaron Miller, the actual artist who did it, came by my video and said that he really enjoyed my interpretation. And I that made me so happy because the level of talent that it takes to do that, I'm just happy to not have them go, you, I hate what you're doing. Don't talk about my art. You, you're an idiot. Like, that's the level because these guys' skill is so insane to me that I couldn't begin to try and do what they're doing. It's so, so impressive to me what they can transmit with their artistic capabilities. So, first thing he did was take a look through the world guide and then start looking for reference images of ibises. At the same time, he created a new image in Photoshop to record any ideas as they occurred to him and started to sketch in some rough shapes. And so here we can see the first image that he used. And in the background, you can see that the pyramid is there. The obelisks are not yet there. The, there's the rough, blocky shapes of some of the side elements. All the ibises are represented just by big, bright blue slashes of light. And the initiate himself is just represented by that like kind of rock jutting up out of the water there. So you can see this is a very simplistic start to it with the basic elements. But I absolutely love getting to see it like this. And this, in a way, 
is interesting too. This magic just looks like crystal shards that are like held up in the air for a moment that are almost all about to slam down into that rock obliterating it. If you just put a human down there, it would look like a bunch of magical shards that were about to obliterate a dude. Very cool. I love that you can already see in the original sketch, you can see the reflections in the water. Stuff like that is so impressive to me. So next he says, it usually takes quite a few attempts to find the right idea. But for this image, everything came together really fast with very little effort on my part. Well, that's nice to hear. After a couple hours, I ended up with a sketch that I thought looked promising, but at this point I was stuck trying to decide between two different color palettes. I felt I needed a fresh look, so I closed the image and worked on something else. So you can see here, and we'll put them up side by side just to give you a better idea. You can see that we have a, a much lighter, more purpley, pinkish kind of feel to it with the second iteration. Other than that, it looks pretty much identical. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So he says, it's easy to fall in love with an idea only to find you hate it the next day. But the following morning, the image still looked pretty good. It was still quite rough in places, so I decided to do a bit more work on it before sending it in. The main things to fix were the birds, which looked like blue blobs, and the man, which looked like a gray blob. I painted a dozen or so different birds with the reference images I'd found, and then I duplicated and positioned to create the impression of a flock and used a Photoshop gradient to quickly color them blue. After tidying up a few other areas, I emailed the sketch to Sam. That's Sam. The way that he describes it, it just makes it sound like, it's just, I don't know, man, the level of whatever. Anyways, let, let me not get hooked up on their process and how impressive it is. Sam was happy with the sketch, so all I had to do was refine what was already there, adding some details to the man, cleaning up the water and reflections, and making sure the blue birds would print correctly. My god, the level of skill on this is really impressive. And there's a cool little thing here at the bottom of the article where you actually, they have the, the artwork in sequence so you can see it being improved. So I wanna just show that really quickly too so you can see it through the four steps that it goes through, starting with the basic slashes all the way to the birds at the end. This artwork to me is absolutely amazing. This would be quite the spectacle to behold. And it would it's an amazing because I love the idea. Like this initiate has come to a completely peaceful, part of the riverbanks he's just there to meditate or whatever and all of a sudden out of nowhere there's this grand spectacle and you just have to stare up at it and all oh, what is it is it a sign of the gods what what is this meant to be it's absolutely breathtaking i love both of these pieces of artwork murmuring mystic and days absolute home run for me so that being said you know what time it is right it's time for some six color action baby are the sixth color of magic. All right, well, now that we've got that taken care of, actually, before we head off, there's one more thing I want to tell you about. I have just put up on my other channel a video about the absolute worst baby names in existence. Did you know that some awful people name their babies things like Meldor? Don't believe me? Here's a clip. That can't be a human name. There's no way. There's no way. There's no fucking way. There's no way somebody named a baby fucking Meldor. Oh, God, no. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Yeah, so get on over there. There'll be a link at the end of the video. Now, let's roll the scroll. Let's get them golden lords going. Oh, yeah. Thanks for supporting me. Have to welcome the two newest members to the Golden Scroll. Raul Sabalos, we're Sabalorating. And Andrew Finnick, I ain't finicked with you. Oh, all the puns, no extra charge. Thanks for joining up, boys. Really appreciate it. So what's next? You want some more allure here? Or you want to hear about the worst baby names in existence and watch me slowly go cycling down into madness, apparently on a bike. Beep, beep. Bikes don't beep. And I'm history, baby.